Lucy. What? I was getting worried what kept you guys. I got here 20 minutes ago. Too many police checkpoints. What? You took a wise decision. All alone. Apparently word was out and the police were looking for a gang of four men. Nobody suspected a thing when I saw three guys and a pretty lady in one car. As always, to the checkpoint, we beat them to it. This governor is stupid. Very stupid. What are you thinking? Putting all of them out there on the road like that? Do they think that's going to solve the problem? Let me tell you something. That as long as there is one youth in this country who goes to bed hungry, not because he's not willing to walk, but because some idiot is on position. I stole the money meant for everybody. This generation will continue to suffer rupture. A philosophy graduate is talking. <laughs> but he's right. Very correct. Government spending billions on security. Security for the rich, not for the poor. What has the poor man got to secure? Nothing. He has nothing. If only the government will learn to spend half of that money on education and employment. We won't be going through this because everybody will be safe. We won't need security. Right? Yeah. Right? It's like spending money on cure, not prevention. Well, now we are them. Now we are them. This one. Your father will give us some of the money he stole from the bank. <laughs> yes! <laughs> we bought our share! You think we are bad people, Abby? You think we like carrying guns? It's idiots like your father that make us carry guns. Bank chief! Talk to bank thief! But one day, one blessed day, there will be a revolution in this country. And all the thieves will be sacrificed one after the other. Just one day. Guys, What's the matter now? Why are you shouting and panicking everybody in this house? The last time you did this, it was just to tell me that your wife was pregnant with your 12th child. So what is it this time? And where is Bola? You were supposed to pick her up from her orientation camp. Not so. Chief. Chief. This Bola. But now, those people slapped me so hard that I fainted right there. When I woke up from the faint, but that was nowhere to be found. What are you talking about? What gibberish are you saying? Chief, it looks like Bola has been kidnapped. The people that came to, to help me after they had gone. Better shut your mouth. Chief, Chief. Bola has been what? <laughs> We, 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 we want to kidnap us. 
from men. Shot in the air. And they took Bola away after knocking me unconscious, Chief. You must be joking. No. Frank! Frank! Sir! Sir. Help me ask him all. Where is Bola? Are you deaf? Where is Bola? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I was unconscious. Because somebody that revived me. But I was nowhere to be found. They say, they say four, four men took her to their car. And they sped off. I don't know where they took her to. Two one zero. Two one zero. Four zero. Four zero. Seven two five. What? Seven two five. Thank you. Why are you being polite to me? You can't even kill me now if you want to. So why are you being polite to me? I mean, why are you using words like please and thank you? You were kidnapped for heaven's sakes. What do you have against kidnappers? A lot. A whole lot. I think they're cowards who take defenseless people and hold them to ransom and ask for money. No, not ask. They demand for money, and I think God should make all of them burn in hell for what they're doing to the peace and quiet of this country. I can see you have no idea of what you speak. So what happens to people like your father? Hmm? Stole so much from the bank, and the bank crashed. What happens to him? Hmm? Do you know how many families are starving today because of his actions? Do you know? Do you know how many abled young men are out there who are unemployed because of his theft? Have you got an idea? I have a friend here who is a banker. He worked with a failed bank. The bank crashed. Not your father's bank, but the bank is a bank. Huh? Do you know how many kidnappers your father created when he crashed the bank? Let's talk about those in public positions. Hmm? They enrich themselves at the expense of the masses. Have you seen a, a, a poor child cry because of hunger? Have you? And you want to talk about something you have no idea about? You're guilty, so am I. We're all guilty. Except some are more guilty than others. You know, we kidnap only you. Your father kidnapped the whole nation. Have you seen it like that? And we are asking for a ransom for an individual. And I think we even have every right to. He's holding the whole country at ransom. And you want to talk. You're a criminal. And that's all I know. No amount of logic can ever justify crime. Now you, Sabi, I'm going to call your dad, speak to him, and tell him you're fine. And if I refuse? Then we treat you the way we treat stubborn people. Maybe you think we're joking. It's ringing. And that we want 40 million naira. Don't try anything funny.
my daughter has been taken and they're asking for 40 million but there's no way I'm going to pay that kind of money I mean not that it is too much to secure the release of my daughter but because those contracts don't deserve it imagine a group of never do well constitute themselves into a nuisance and think they can enrich themselves from other people's sweat Boris, I see that you're not a man of many words, so why don't I just save you my anger and frustration? Yes, I'll appreciate that, Chief. Thank you. Since my daughter was kidnapped two days ago, I've talked to all my friends and associates, and one name keeps coming up in secluded circles. Your name, Boris. They say you're the best private detective in this part of West Africa, and that you are with the U.S. Marines, and went to free Kuwait in 1990 with the Marines. Now, I don't know which part of all the stories is true and which part is false. All I want now is action. Out of interest, did you single-handedly free the billionaire businessman Terry Almond when he was kidnapped last year? Yes, I did, Chief. Um, and I like to walk alone. And um, I suppose you have a fee? Yes, I do. How much? Mm. Do you have a photograph of uh, your daughter? Yeah. That's my own way of uh, beginning to make a connect with the person. You see, I like to develop a passion to set that person free. Well, once I've done that, I'll tell you my fee. Frank! Frank! Sir! Uh, please go to Bala's room and get a nice picture of her. Get a good recent photo and bring it immediately. Yes, sir. Um, tell me, Chief, is it established that the kidnapped person is okay? No bodily harm? Have you spoken to her? Yes, I believe she's okay. I talk to her every day. Now, how did the kidnappers get in touch with you? Uh, they called by phone. And uh, they actually used Bola's phone to call. Okay, good. Mm. All right. I'd like to have that phone number as well. Um, that will be all for now, the most important thing for now. Okay, sure. I'll get you the number. Can you imagine? They are telling us about one million point agenda. Let them do one, only one, one for us. They know if you do half. See this guy, I see this so half. They know if you do. <laughs> Now vision three million AD. Now that they give us nonsense. nonsense. One million points of <laughs> Help! Somebody help me, please! Help! <laughs> Open your mouth one more time, and I'll show you. <laughs> what has she done? She screamed. have grooves here. Okay. And if you don't want to get hurt, you need to obey the rules. And that would include no screaming or doing anything that will attract attention. For your information, we are deep in the forest. And even if you climb the highest tree, and scream till nightfall. Nobody will hear you. Thing is, we can't take chances because we can never know when there's a hunter close by. Okay? Why did you scream? Try blindfolding your eyes for 24 hours. 
try tying your hands behind you for 24 hours and see if you don't want freedom so much that you just open your mouth and scream. Have you ever been in the dark? Slept in the dark? Woke up in the dark where every single thing is black? What you people are doing to me is inhuman and don't even try to tell me that it's my father's fault. If you have grudges against my father, why didn't you take it to him instead? I am not my father. God visits the sin of a father on his children. Are you God? We are humans, we have his attributes. The soul that seen it shall die, says that same God. He did not say, the daughter of the soul that seen it shall die. Well, at least you agree with me that your father happens to be one of the souls that have seen it in this country. He may have made some professional mistakes. I don't know. My father is human. Nobody is perfect. Point is, does evil justify evil? Maybe. Well, that's a moral question, and you must answer it. I don't have to answer it. Have you forgotten you're the one who is kidnapped here, not me? You sound embarrassed and unable to answer the question. I wish I could see your face now. Full of embarrassment. You're trying to sound tough, but you know you're not. In fact, you are the softest of them all. What are you doing among them? You don't belong here. Now you shut up. You shut up, otherwise I'll be the next to smack you. Clean up your face. Understand, we're not supposed to harm the girl. We're supposed to be able and in good shape when the father brings the money eventually. Be careful. We all depend on each other. Whatever you do will affect others. Always have this in mind. As they say, all for one. And one for all. What did I do wrong? I didn't say you've done anything wrong. All I'm trying to say is that you be careful. I'll be careful. <clears throat> well, I think you slapping her today wasn't the very best thing to do. You could have just screamed with so much anger and danger in your voice. It would have been good enough to shut her up. Can I be in charge of the girl from now onwards? I will take responsibility for anything that will go wrong. I don't get it. Why are you so interested in this girl? Because she's not afraid to argue. I mean, we argue a lot. About morality, God, sin, salvation, good, bad, wrong. You heard her talk. Have you have you ever kidnapped somebody with such intelligence and boldness? I, I so find it so intriguing. 
You are bored, Austin. So anything can interest you, as long as it chases away your boredom, not so. <clears throat> can I be in charge of the girl from now onwards, until she gets ransomed? If you insist. But I must, I must warn you. If anything goes wrong, friendship or no friendship, I could kill you. I insist. She's all yours. The girl's phone is ringing. Oh, I think it's a fifth one. Who's this? Yeah, hello. My man, how are you? Who are you and why are you calling me your man? I believe you are the ones holding Miss Bola Dejuma. Chief Adejuma's daughter. Hello? Hello? Yeah, talk if you want to talk and stop this hello, hello, everything. All right, listen, my name is Boris. And I'm representing the chief in this matter. Hmm? He has asked me to negotiate on his behalf and get his daughter released. But there's, there's a little issue to be addressed before then. Yeah, which is, which is talk. I'm, I'm, I'm listening and stop wasting my time. Listen, the chief wants me to ensure that his daughter is hale and hearty. And then we'll find a way to send the money to you. Simple. You did, Chris. You and your chief, you boot crazy. We make the rules around here. We are in charge here. We tell you what we want, when we want it, and how you deliver it. Okay? See one fool called and insisting on seeing the girl before paying the money. Listen, my man, listen. I am not a fool. I'm a man like you. All right? And my interest is to get the girl freed. Then pay the money. Only after I have seen her and ensured that she's okay. This is impossible. You're pushing me, Mr. Man. You definitely. Look, listen, what is the worst you can do? What are you going to gain by her death? Huh? You. <laughs> Hello? Hello? See, listen. What? You, you want to lose 40 million naira? Listen, the chief is probably going to marry another woman. He'll just mourn the girl for a few months, marry another woman. And in a short while, he's going to be a father again. But you have lost 40 million. Right? Let's, let's do it like this. Huh? Arrange for me to see her, take a photograph of her, show it to the chief, and you get your money. Huh? Is that okay? I, you can arrange for me to meet you anywhere. Huh? And then one of your men can drive my car. Blindfold me if you like. You can time us. If I try anything funny and we don't return when we should, then 
can go ahead and kill the girl. Is that okay? Huh? <laughs> My guy, do you want time to think about it? Huh? Listen, I'm only in this for the money. I'm working for my money too. Hmm? If we free the girl, the chief is going to pay me and you get your 40 million naira. Okay? Hmm? Yeah, we release the girl, I get my money, you get yours. I go my way, you go your way. It's too risky. We won't do it. Well, I think it has to do with operation. How well we can plan it. You know, plan it well, execute it properly. Bring the guy in, have him look at the girl, we get paid, boom, solved. We'll do no such thing. We'll tell them no. And if they don't pay, we kill the girl. How does that translate to money in our pocket when that is our main mission? I don't care. We kidnap someone else and get paid. Simple. And if the person doesn't pay, we kill them. We keep killing. Till when? I don't understand your logic. I mean, are we the ones supposed to be dancing to their tuner? They're supposed to be dancing to us? My logic is this. Do we keep killing till we get killed? Or we get broke? Or we get caught? I just think it has to do with planning. We can pick up this guy from a place and time that we choose. Bring him in, blindfolded of course. Let him have a look at the girl. We drop him off blindfolded wherever. He goes back, testifies to the father, the girl is fine. We get paid, we scram, move on to something else. What's the big deal? Oh, Joe, you haven't said anything. What do you think? I would say we don't make it look like we're begging them to pay the money. We play the waiting game. No contacts. No phone calls. And let's see what they will come up with next. That's better. That's better. Good morning, Chief. Boris, where's my daughter? When is she coming back home to me? Uh, well, Chief, I've made contact with the kidnappers. And uh, for now, I think they're thinking about the offer I made them. So very soon, we should be able to hear something from them. So... Boris, I want results. Tell me exactly, when is my daughter coming home? Soon, Chief. How soon is soon? Very soon, Chief. I mean, let's talk a uh, number of days now. Is it going to be two days, three days, four days? Give me a number. Um, okay, say six days, Chief. Six. So my daughter comes home in six days. Now, if she doesn't come home in six days, I reserve the right to arrest you for complicity in this crime. But if she comes home in six days, I not only pay you the agreed fee, I'll also offer you a contract in my new company worth 10 million naira. How about that for a deal? It's a deal, Chief. So, my daughter will be home in six days. Six days, Chief. Sit down. Well, if it's okay with you, I'll call my lawyer. And um, if my daughter doesn't come home in six days, you don't get paid. Hello. Yeah, Barristani? Can you come over to my house right now, please? Okay, thank you. You see, football is not all about how long you've been in the game, but how you grow in the game with talent, skill, and experience. That's what I'm trying to talk about. What are you saying? What are you saying? So are you trying to tell me like somebody like Kaka now, who started playing football at the tender age, that his experience has nothing to do with his, 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 why he's so well and what he does? And Smith. Who told you that Kaka started playing ball at a tender age? You go out and listen to some beer parlor talks and then you come here and spit mambo jambo? Look at this here, man. What are you saying? Play, play, play. 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 Ah. Free ah. He is right, you know. Yeah. Kaka actually started playing football at a very tender age. He started playing when he was eight years old for a local club there known as Alphaville. At the time, he also played tennis, but 
When he turned 15 and moved to the city of Sao Paulo and signed with the Sao Paulo Football Club, that he decided to focus all his energy on football. I'm sure you know his real name is not Kaka. His real name is Ricardo Isexon dos Santos Liti. Tell me, tell me more about Kaka, you know, he's my idol, you know. Yeah. Well, at the age of 18, Ricardo Isexon dos Santos Liti suffered from a swimming pool accident that left him paralyzed with a spinal cord fracture. But surprisingly, he made full recovery and until date remains one of the most religious football players. You know, because he attributed his recovery to none other but God. So, which club does Kaka play now? He plays for the Brazilian national team and also plays for Real Madrid. When Kaka was with Sao Paulo FC, he made a total of 58 appearances and scored 23 times. He was also the youngest ambassador to the UNICEF World Food Program. It is also recorded in the Football Italia that Florentino Perez, the president of Real Madrid, offered Inter Milan a total of 68.5 million euros for Kaka. Wow, 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 wow. Tell me more, tell no, me no, more. No, 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 you tell me more about cars. I mean, I love automobiles, powerful engines, no joke, you know, turbo power. You and Kaz, you see how she sounds all excited like a child. What the, what the hell is wrong with this guy? We're talking about football and you're talking about Kaz? Please, 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 please. Ah. Turbo powered, huh? Hmm. Turbo engines are respiratory engines that make use of a blow down turbine to recover energy from exhaust gases. The blow down turbine increases the output of the engine without increasing its power consumption. Uh, a good example is the Detroit diesel DD15 engine, which claims up to 5% better fuel with greater power available compared to their, you know, previous engines. This guy chop rich. You see, when a blowdown turbine is attached to an engine, it does not reduce its power due to exhaust gas flow restriction, since a blowdown turbine is a velocity turbine, not a pressure turbine. And how come you know all this? This is physics. Pure physics. And the sports? I read. Oh. You they read very well, though. <laughs> no school. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure these guys will miss you when you finally go home. <laughs> but until then, tie her hands before she yanks up her blindfold. Yeah, tie her, we need that money. <laughs> That's what really is important. You see, this girl goes to a nice school. She went to a nice school. Not like people, for people like you who went to community development private school, government approved. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth is English. For people who buy it, people who buy it, people who buy it. The others have gone to town to check on things. I'm the only one left here to guard you. Is there anything you need? No. I don't need anything. I think I know what you need. You need the light. Hi, I'm Austin. Nice to meet you. The others will kill you. They know what you did. Well, that is if you would tell them. You won't tell them, would you? And I can recognize you, you know, when all this is over. Your future stand out. Handsome. I thought kidnappers were supposed to look like monsters. But you're young and good looking. Didn't you see any other work? I expected to hear thank you after removing your blindfold. 
thank you. But it's unfortunate that you'll be the one I recognize first and get arrested when all this is over. It doesn't matter to me. Because once my money is paid, I will be off to Asia, change my name, change my identity. It doesn't matter, it doesn't make a difference. So tell me, since you seem to know about every topic, tell me about me. Tell me about myself. Why am I? Have you charmed me or something? You. Though your body is here, your mind is not here. You're brave, soft, strong, and you have a heart of gold. You're different. You will fall in love with me. I let you. You're a man preoccupied in his heart and his soul with dreams and ambitions. This is a stopgap measure for you. You have your mind focused on greater and bigger things. My only fear is that you may not be able to get out of this when you want to. Also, I see you're disillusioned. Yes. Never mind. I am who I am. I like birds. Do you like birds? Talk to me about birds. Talk to me about the eagle. The tail is you. You are the eagle. Need I say more? Please blind for me before the others get here. I don't want you to get in trouble with them. Right. If you get in trouble with them because of me, would you want me dead? Depends on the trouble. Depends if you intentionally put me into trouble. Do you think that I will do that? I don't know. You can never know what a woman will do next. You're right. your location? 56 Smart Farm Avenue, Newtown. Okay, I'll call you back. Hello? 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 From now on, huh? I want you to track my car wherever I go to. Okay? I want you to go to your office now, set up the device, and track my car.
my car wherever I go to. I don't want any mistakes. All right? I have a feeling there's going to be a lead to that kidnap case. Okay. Um, should I use the real-time GPS device? That way, the information can be saved in this flash drive. Then you download to your laptop and read later. Good, good, exactly. Just do that now quickly. I don't want to carry the device on me in case they want to search me. Okay, sir. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, my brother, how are you? My boys are watching you. Don't try anything funny. Stay on the phone and come right outside to the front of your office. If you try to make any other call, I will know. Come to the front of your office with your hands still at your ears. I'm talking to you now. You get that? I see you now. You're wearing white short sleeve striped shirts, black trousers. Quite impressive. <laughs> yeah, now listen and listen good. Empty your pockets so we make sure that you don't have any other phone on you. Yeah, get into your car and drive to the last junction before Ubene village. And if you're not there in 25 minutes, the deal is off. The girl dies. And to hell with your money. Now, before you leave, drop your phone on the ground and take two steps away from it. Okay, okay. Just watch me do exactly what you say, okay? Face. Okay. So which way are we going? Just drive out of here first. Keep straight on this road, get out of town, and then I will direct you. my brother there's nothing next just wait okay. so we're at the place now eh? oh, yes. Listen, I'm going to blindfold you here now okay and then you come and sit behind here and one of my men will drive the car do you get it okay no problem
Are you there? Oh. 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 Very good. Any there. Okay. What's happening? Why are we stopping? The boss is here. Oh. Alpha. That's for you and the girl's father. For insisting on this visit before paying the money. He's foolish. Because I can call his bluff and kill his daughter for distressing us. But you, you are even more foolish for venturing into the lion's den. What were you thinking? Or don't you know we can just kill you and lose nothing? How much is it paying you? for risking your life like this. It's one million naira. Just for one million naira? What kind of a pig are you? Huh? Well, <laughs> I'm a working man. And I've got bills to pay, so I've got to earn a living. What do you think about kidnappers? Oh, they're, they're human beings like all of us, you know. Well, it's just that they can't stand the hardship out there, so they look for an easy way to money. This is easy? Did I just hear you say easy? me not so. Calculate your every move. Sleep in the bush. Deal with idiots like you and the girl's father almost all the time. Leave in constant fear of the police catching up with you. You call this easy? Did I just hear you say easy? No, no, no. Uh, no, I guess there's no, there's no easy way to money, my brother, you know. Uh, just like the, the kind of work I'm doing now, you know, at the order from you, your boys could just kill me. I guess there's no easy way to it, brother. Once again, you're wrong. 
I know of an easy way to make money. Then tell me, my brother. Politics. You don't need any kind of training on this one. You just need to know how to lie. Lie to the people. Steal their votes. Inflate contracts. Surround yourself. Be without any conscience. Surround yourself with praise singers and thugs who wear three suits and flowing gowns. Politics. <laughs> I hate politics. Well, I think you are just, you know, generalizing for us. You know. uh, maybe you should say bad politicians and bad politics. You know, there are still some good politicians who are true to their mandate. So you think there's still one good politician left out there? The day you find one good politician, you come and shit on my bed. You're here to see the girl, right? Oh, yes, my brother. Yes. It's a long walk out there. Come on, guys. say my father sent you here. Yes, your father sent me. Are you okay? I'm fine. Oh, you're well, eh? Um, we are going to get the money ready. Um, so you'll be going home soon, huh? So the money should be paid by tomorrow or the day after. I'll see your father tomorrow, and um, is there anything you want me to tell him? Tell him that, that I'm angry with him. Tell him that these men have accused him and people like him for the roots in this country, which has led so many people but the young man into crime. Tell him that when I come home, I'll ask for answers. All right, I'll tell him. Don't let anyone deceive you, okay? Crime is crime. Those of us who do hard jobs out there, we're still in the same society. Life is about hardship. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him, I'll tell him all that, okay? Maybe you had more opportunity than the others. But still, there are qualified people who can work, but cannot get a job unless someone in a high place puts in a word for them. And since they have no such people, they cannot get a job. All right. It's nice to meet you, Bola. Okay, gentlemen. I'm satisfied. I'll go get your money ready.
you just keep the conversation brief and warm. Hmm? That way they will feel relaxed and expect her. And then just leave the rest to me. Hello? Yeah, uh, this is Bola's father, Chief Adejuma. Yes. Uh, yeah, first I want to thank you for keeping my daughter safe and well. Yeah. And the, the man that I sent to you has told me everything. Yeah, you get your money tomorrow in the evening. In cash. Just any way you want it. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, tomorrow then. Bye-bye. Good, Chief. That was brief and to the point. Just leave the rest to me from now. Now, you said that uh, they blindfolded you and led you all the way to their den in the forest. How then do you expect to find them? <laughs> well, Chief, what I did was to ask my secretary to track my car. Is that what you have there? Yeah, I've studied the results now, see. While I was talking to Bola at their den, I glanced at my watch, it was 3 p.m. By the time they took me back to my car on the main road, it was 5 p.m., about 5 p.m. And it was 7 by the time they dropped me off at the city junction. So all I need to do is to retrace the tracking, all right? Mm -hmm. And then I know exactly where my car went to and where it stopped, okay? Mm -hmm. I get into the bush, walk for about two hours and then try to locate them within that periphery and then they're going to be sitting dogs when i hit them hard well it sounds good but um has this method worked for you before yeah more than two or three times <clears throat> impressive but um i'll suggest you get the police to back you up you know for numerical strength and for legality as well no no chief I, I prefer to work as a one-man army. There's a tendency to mess things up when we're many, you know. And as for my crime-fighting actions, what I did not tell you is that I am a bona fide cop. I'm a special agent trained with the state CID. So this also falls within my line of duty. Well, to share, but I want results in this case. No problem, Chief. No problem. Would like a drink? Uh, yes, brandy, Chief. Brandy. Okay. Uh, Frank, can you get some brandy, please?
Eu dou essas armas e quero a bola! Acabou! What are you doing? She come down with the blindfold. Come on, go! Go! Go, go left, go left! Go, 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 go! and the stupidity of his visit to come check if the girl is all right. Are we going to stand here and argue? Waste time and energy? Argue about whose fault this is? Or are we going to escape to safety? Don't you talk back at me in that manner. Or I'll blow your brain sky high. I knew it. I knew you mess things for up the moment you started getting yourself attached to this girl. Stop it. I don't get this. I thought you two were supposed to be friends. What is this? Shut up, you devil. <laughs> I'll teach you how to pump that time. Oh. You've had it all grosses with us, huh? You've had it all grosses with us. Huh? From now on, I'm going to treat you the way a kidnapped person is being treated. Aston? Hmm. No. You think I'm scared to die? I'm not scared to die. But I can assure you, whoever is back there will reach you sooner than later. He killed our men. He fucking killed him. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Shoot! Shoot me! <laughs> Take away my life. What is my life worth? Nothing! Nothing living in crime! Shoot me! <laughs> Shoot me! Please, 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 Austin. Please, I beg you in God's name, please. please. Your life is worth something. Please, please. You see? <laughs> you would have been involved. And you sit up there right under my nose, Austin. You are slippery. As slippery as a dirty simile. Stop it! Stop it right now! Stop it! Stop it, both of you! on your head. Come on, move! <laughs> hey, hey! Hey, <gasps> look, I said stay where you are! Please, please, please! 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 Please, Oh, 
question. Yes, yes, that's a common criminal. Come on, let me take you on to daddy. Turn a new leaf. Does it make you happy? Or does it give you sleepless nights and nightmares? Listen, Bala. Enough of this nonsense over the killing of those criminals. The police detective killed them in self defense. They would have killed him if he didn't kill them first. He did it in the normal course of his duty as policeman combating crime. And for your information, their deaths were well documented. They were reported to forces headquarters. It is legal. Those boys would have killed anybody who tried to get in the way of their taking ransom for you. Anybody. Me, the detective, they would have killed even you. If they deserve to die, then so do so many people in this society. Those who have laid siege on the life of the masses and deprived them of their basic needs. Those are the ones who take away more lives than even these criminals. People like who exactly? Dear Daddy, how was the service at the bank that she headed? You've gone totally mad. You've gone crazy. Yes, I have gone crazy. And that is why I cannot sleep. That's why I keep having nightmares. Because I saw them killed. Daddy, I saw them gone down. Well, those who rob this country every blessed day of billions walk the roads freely and get praised as models to be emulated even though they're as guilty as the ones shot dead you need a counselor what i see here in front of me is a young girl who has gone through brainwash in the hands of hardened and unrepentant criminals who got nothing less than what they deserved. You need some rest. Let's go to your room. Come. Don't touch me. You have robbed this country too. You should be behind bars. I'm able and willing to work. I work when I can find an odd job. Please help me. Please give little money so that me and my children can eat. Please. I'm very sorry. I don't have any money to spend. Uh, um, please, brother, please. Help me with a little money. Please. Even 20 naira is okay. Nothing is so small. Please. I beg you. Please. Will you get out of my way? Why can't you believe me? I said I don't have any damn to spare. See? Can I find anything inside? I said I don't have any money on me to spare. Or is it because I'm dressed like this? 
listen, let me tell you. There are some people you see on the street, well dressed. You don't have any money on them. So just let me be. I have my own problem, okay? Most of it. You may not have money to spare for real. But don't let it make you feel so terribly bad, okay? Thank you. What's the matter? I mean, why are you begging? You really don't look like a beggar to me. What's the problem? <sighs> it's a long story. Well, I wasn't really going anyway. I was just taking a walk. So I have time. You can tell me as we walk, okay? Okay. It all started when my husband died. His people accused me of killing him with witchcraft. They seized everything he had, including his house, and threw me and my children out. My parents are late, so I went to live with my brother, who has a wife. But you know how we women are. The wife started complaining soon. So, after a few months, we became homeless again. So I decided to bring my children to the city to do odd jobs so that I can feed them. And also avoid the shame of being thrown out by friends and relatives at the slightest provocation. But sometimes such jobs doesn't come and we have to eat. So I beg. <laughs> where are your children now and where do you live? <sighs> we built a small house by the road. That's where we live. And my children are there washing bottles. They pick empty bottles, we wash them and sell them to bottle buyers who use them for local drugs and other things. What is your name? My name is Ogbene. Ogbene, take me to your house. I want to meet your children. And don't worry about food today, okay? I'll give you money to eat. Alright? <laughs> Thank you very much, sister. Thank you. God will bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let me take you to my house. It's very close. <laughs> So, that you know yourself. <laughs> so, this is where we live. So, where are the children now? They are the backyard. They are washing bottles. They are hardworking. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm liking them already. <laughs> Take me to the back. I want to meet them. Okay.
Daddy, did you hear what I said? Mother, what is it this night? Will you just let me eat my supper in peace? I said I need some money. I need about two million naira. Tell me what it's for and I'll give it to you. There are some people out there in need and I need the money to help them out of a really, really bad situation. You must be out of your mind. You want me to give you two million naira so that you go and dash people? Unbelievable. In fact, if you don't want me to eat this food, if you don't want me here, I'll just leave this house for you and I'll go somewhere else to live in peace. Well, maybe you should leave. Yes. Leave and, and go live in, in a shack by the roadside, exposed to, to ants and, and mosquitoes, exposed to the sun and the rain, day and night. Try that for a change. And maybe you begin to have a little compassion in your heart for people who live their entire lives like that. People live in shanties everywhere. Even in America, people live in ghettos. In Italy, in the UK, everywhere. Everybody cannot and should not be rich. So what are you now? Some uh, modern day Jesus Christ, savior of the poor in spirit and pocket? I don't know what's coming over you. Besides, if uh, people live in shacks in this city, is that my problem? Or is it my fault? Am I the government? You may not be the government. But what have you given back to this society which you stole so much from to become rich? Think about that. I mean, there is so much to do. Buy block making machines and for area boys and get them off crime and off our streets. Buy welding machines, donate shops, hairdressing kids to prostitutes. Get them off our streets at night. Daddy, one wealthy man like you can prevent 200 young men from crime and save their lives only if you do the right thing. But you won't because you're a selfish capitalist. Oh, I see. I see you still like your air conditioned room, don't you? Why don't you just go out into the open air and uh, sleep with those uh, poor people you've been campaigning for? Or better still, just go into their shanties and sleep there. In time, Daddy. In time. Don't judge me yet. I need to make a change in as many lives as I can. And I can only do that from the outside. If I'm sunk in the darkness of deprivation as they are, then I cannot change their lives. Because then, I too will be in need of help myself. Nonsense. Hello, Chief. My daughter has disappeared from the house. She took two million naira. I want you to find her. Oh my God. What, what happened, Chief? I don't know. Ever since she came back from her kidnap ordeal, she has become my most bitter enemy. And it doesn't look like she's going to stop. All she wants to do is sit in her room all day, moody. And when I asked her why, she calls me a murderer who sent a police mercenary to kill a good man who just happened to find himself in a life of crime because he had no other choice. And then she also says that um, I'm turning a lot of young men to a life of crime because the bank that I was running failed and they lost their jobs. She says I should have thought about how my own decisions in running the bank will affect other people and their jobs. Can you imagine that? As if I take decisions concerning the running of the bank alone. Boris, that girl wears me out. She says so many things, so many things. How can my own flesh and blood suddenly turn against me? I don't understand, Chief. It beats me. 
a really big space. But okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get to work immediately. Boris, please find her. That girl is breaking my heart. All my wealth, everything I own, all my toil is for her to enjoy. Now that I'm alive, and also to inherit when I'm dead and gone. So why can't she not just be a good girl and calm down? I don't know what is it with this our sudden obsession with helping people. I mean, people that will show her no appreciation whatsoever, even if she kills 10 goats and gives them to eat every day. Well, Chief, I think those boys fed her with a lot of lies while she was their captive, you know. And um, this is just a result of one of those things. Well, I'm, I'm sure with time all this madness will get off her brain and she'll be back to her normal self. Please find her ASAP. I want her back home. I will, Chief. I will, trust me. Uh, but Chief, Chief, I need to know the immediate cause of her leaving home and why she would take uh, two million naira with her. We had an argument. She said I should buy block making machines for area boys. And I told her I'll do no such thing. Then she called me a selfish capitalist and ran off to her room. Imagine that. My daughter. And then when I woke up this morning, I found her gone from the house and two million naira missing from her room. And to crown it all, I was fast asleep and did not even hear her enter my room and take the money. All right, just calm down, Chief. Calm down. I promise you I'll find her. I'll find her. Trust me. All right. Yep. Bye. Hey, Daniel, it's... Uh, it's Mm? When was the last time you and your children had eggs? <laughs> ah, eggs. I can't remember. But I think it was on Christmas Day last year. One man gave us 2,000 naira. Mm. I ran to the market <laughs> and I bought eggs, I bought rice, I bought dry fish, and we ate and ate and ate. It was very good. Very, very good. I still remember that day till today. It's not. And why are you crying? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm just happy. I'm happy because you're happy and you're enjoying your food. I have to go now. Thank you very much for visiting us. Yeah, Even for the food. Thank you. I want you to get a decent accommodation for you and your children. I mean, leave this shack you're living in. Rent a place, even if it's one room. You can trade, can't you? Yes. Trade and, and send them back to school. Let them have a better life. They deserve more from life. Let them have a better future. Everything you said is true. But where is the money? I don't have a cobble. We depend on arms and good Samaritans like you to even eat. So we cannot afford better housing than the one you have. I know. That's why I bought you some money. Public yard, you know, rent a small shop and buy like 
at least 20 bags of rice, like 5 bags of beans and like at least 2 bags of curry. I want you to grow your business and make profits. And I'm certain by this time next year, you'll boast of 3 times this amount that you have right now. That's all I can do for you, okay? Am I, am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? Hey, God. Hey, God. God. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, God. So you still have this kind of people in your world, Lord. Thank you very much. God, you are, you, you are indeed a great God. I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. Hola. God will bless you. You will live a long life. You will never meet with mishap. Oh. As you have saved me and my children from, from this rain and hot sun. So shall God protect you. So shall God keep you in a place of shelter. And cover you, Bola. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know what to say again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Was here with your picture asking if you were lodging here. With my picture? Yes, ma'am. Describe the man. Well, auntie, he's dark, stocky, or good looking. He has beard, shiny. I know, I know the man. Is that a picture in your hand? Yes, ma'am. He gave me a picture and um, gave me a phone number. He actually told me I should ring him whenever I see you in the hotel. He introduced himself as a detective. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Detectives don't lock their offices when their secretaries are not six. Very security conscious. I hear you're looking for me. Should I rather say, hunting for me? Your father is very worried about you. And he wants you to come back home as soon as possible. How much is my father paying you to find me and bundle me home, Mr. Mercenary? I'm doing this at no cost to him. Just that I share his pain. Oh. Pain? What do you know about pain? Here, let me give you a little lecture about pain. Sit. Sit. is what one irresponsible public servant causes the entire nation when his actions are spurred by selfish rather than collective reasons. 
people lose their jobs because the firms can't pay salaries. Road accidents occur because the roads are bad. Patients die in the hospital because doctors are on strike. Pain is the cry of little children who go to bed hungry. I don't want to live my life having so much and not being able to give to those that don't have. My father has so much. What is wrong if I take a YouTube from what he has to help save lives? Which is more important? To save lives or to be of good behavior, according to my father's tenets. Well, Mr. Boris, hunt for me no more. I guess I'm found now. I will go home. But I bet you, my father will wish I didn't come home. Bella, what's this? Who are these people? They're destitute from the streets. I brought them home with me to have a little taste of comfort for once in their lives. You brought vermin into my house? You brought mosquitoes, cockroaches and flies into my own house? You all should get out right now before I spray you with insect killers. Do you hear me? Get out of this house! They are going nowhere, Dad. They are going nowhere. I brought them home so you will see the people you're supposed to help with all the money that you've got. Since you will not look at them on the streets, I brought them home with me. Can you look at them and not feel guilty? Go ahead, look them in the eye and see the pain buried there. See the sufferings etched there by the sun and the rain. So you people won't get out of my house? Okay, wait there. The police will come here and get you out. Nonsense. Oh, drink up, drink up. 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 And I have no one other than you to thank for it. Thank you very much, Paula. I'm happy that I've been able to impact positively in the life of a fellow human being. <laughs> oh, God. My children now go to school. Um, I enrolled them with part of the money you, you gave me just as you instructed. Wow! Oh God! More oh, great news! Oh my God! This is good. I'm really happy. You see, happiness in life isn't just about how you smile. 
but how often you can make other people smile. You see, because then your smile is brother. <laughs> because you smile through the people whose smiles you cost. And even step on it. Step on it if you wish. <laughs> you see that smile on your face? That smile. That is all the reward that I want from you. That you're happy. And that you keep smiling. You see, Bala, God has shown me more of his graciousness through you. So, I'll keep smiling now. <laughs> I'll smile. I even smile more when I look at my new shop. Small, but stocked up. <laughs> Come, let me show you. What is that for? Are you going to eat on the road? <laughs> no, just hold on. Come first, let me show you. Come now! <laughs> That's good though, my sister. I sell rice. I sell beans. I sell dry maize. I sell garry. And my customers are growing every day. <laughs> Man, I cannot wait to see this shop. Oh wait. <laughs> Oh Lord have mercy. This is this is so nice. <sighs> I don't know how far we've come. Um please wait for me. Just for one minute. Please. Alright. Oh, All in trees and trees. Oh my children know. I know children we know. <laughs> I brought you food. Oh. Thank you. So how are you today? I'm fine. <sighs> Sorry. Come and meet my friend. Oh. Come. You have a friend today? Yes. And mm. I want to introduce her to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is good. Mm. Mm. I give him food every day. It goes a long way to help him save the little arms he gets from passers-by. <sighs> yes. I learned from you. That it is a beautiful thing to give. Obene, today you have given me the greatest gift on earth. I'm happy because you've been like a seed which germinates and bears good fruit. What? What is my life worth if I don't do to others what was done to me? What less? <laughs> Ask him, can he do business? I heard you. I cannot do business. I am blind. Here. Take. In time, maybe you'll be hearing from us. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. You seem so happy. This is the happiest I've seen you in a very long time. You are even singing a song. Uh, I am so happy. 
I'm so happy because a good seed that I sowed has given birth to a good fruit. You see, I was kind to somebody and that person has been kind to another person. And that is how it will keep going. An endless chain filled with kind people because I was kind at the beginning of the chain. That is how wickedness bears fruit too, you know. When you're wicked to somebody, you have been wicked to millions of people. Because that person will be wicked to the next person and on and on and on. You see, because when a person meets with wickedness, he's likely to rub it up on the next person. So, let me assume we have a Aristotle in this house right under my own roof. Or maybe it's Plato or Socrates or one of the great Asian philosophers. Not so. <laughs> Please. Thank you, say that. You know, I've been thinking of a way to help you. You know, what if you have a partner or a wife who can help you manage your business, assuming? I give you some money to start on. Are you married? I've never been married. What if I get you a good wife? Would you want to marry? Yes. I need help. I need love. Hmm. You can have a man of your own, you know. That beggar is a fine man. He's just blind. Imagine him in good clothes. He will make a good husband and father to your kids. You can help him manage his business and the two of you can grow. Think about it. Give him these clothes. Tell him you bought them for him. Let him have a good bath and try them on. He sleeps on that roadside. Has his bath once in a while. When he can pay a little boy to take him to the small river behind the bush. He can never have a good bath. And there is no way I can invite him to my house for a bath because of my children. I mean, who do I tell them he is? Okay, okay, okay. I'll work out something, okay? I just need a little time to work it out in my head, okay? Fine. What do you think? You will soon finish dressing. Ah, ah. We wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh my God, Silas, you look amazing. Doesn't he? Okay, let me leave the both of you, okay? Uh, you can stay here as long as you want. Eat anything you want. The room has been paid for at night, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. Bye. Bye. She went past to get married, right? Mm. Do you like me? If you'll be a good man. <laughs> I am a good man. But with a woman like you beside me, I'll be a better man. Um, you know, I can tell the difference between light and darkness. I was blind at the age of eight. And I can tell when something is smooth and rough. Could you take my hand and lead me to your face? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I thought of you. You have a good heart and you are so pretty. Thank you. How come you haven't told me your name since we met? I know you as the woman that brings food to me. Okay. My name is Ogbene. Ogbene? Mm -hmm. That is a beautiful name. And it sounds so musical. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My name is Silas. I like your name. Do you like my own? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Did I say or do anything wrong? You sound like a little boy. <laughs> I like that though. I like it. So how are you enjoying your marital life? We are fine, no auntie. We are just waking up. Living in this big house you rented for us makes us oversleep all the time. <laughs> that's okay, that's no problem. You should enjoy and take our time now. Hmm? Like your honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, my husband's Pamoyo business is picking up very fast. We now buy up to 10 empty drums from the east and bring them to Lagos. All thanks to you. Wow, wow, that's wonderful. Oh, that is so great. I gave my old house to an orphan girl of 20. She has two brothers, two younger brothers to cater for. So, and even the shop, my former shop, I gave it to her too. At least they cannot starve again like they used to. Well, that is so nice. God bless you. God really bless you. God bless you too. God bless you. You started it all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Honey, that was Antibola. I suggest you ask Antibola. She was the one I saw going out with the car. And when she came back, I did not see her with the car again. Meaning what? Bola? Bola, come here right now. Yes, Dad. Daddy, it's about the car. I sold it. You did what? Yes, I sold it. I sold it to you raise up money to set up a couple that I much made. Since you would never give me money to help anybody if I had asked you. So I sold it. 
You sold my car. You sold my favorite car. Yes, you. Follow them. And officers, don't release her until she tells you who she sold my vehicle to. I want you to get all the information that we need to recover the vehicles. Names, addresses, phone numbers. Okay? Yeah, let's go. You, what are you doing there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why are you broke with your personal office? Why don't you take me to the police station? Because if I take you to the police station, they will put you in jail as your father wants. Listen, Bola. I brought you here to give you another chance. You just tell us the whereabouts of the car. Because if I decide to make this official as your father wants it, they're going to detain and charge you for car theft. I am not a thief. I'm just, I'm just a young girl born with the desire to help people in need. There are so many of them in our society. Ask yourself this question. Did I sell my father's car to, to party with boys and, and, and drink champagne and just generally have a good time? The answer is no. While my mates from rich homes are parting from one European country to another, I busy myself with alleviating the sufferings of the needy among us. Yet, all I get awaiting me as reward is jail. But if that is my portion for doing what I am doing, then take me to detention, Mr. Boris. Take me and tell your conscience that you jail a girl who did nothing but help. Chief, I don't think it will, it will be right for your daughter to defend herself against you in a court of law. That will bring your public image to its lowest end. You know, what I think you should do is, you know, show that you have concern for other people. You know, a few thousand naira here and there to charity will help to calm her down. You know, and then you can have your peace back and your family, you see. I don't think you should go out to match force with force. Remember, this is a family matter. In any case, I think that if you go to court, the sympathy of any judge will lie with a young girl who, instead of spending her father's money, partying and roaming about the town, decides to steal her father's money 
to help ordinary people on the street. So, now you believe what she's doing is right? Stealing my money? No, I haven't said that, Chief. You know, stealing is wrong in whatever way you look at it, but in this case, the purpose for which the stealing is done Remember, she's not stealing from outsiders. She's stealing from her father, whom she knows has much. Meaning what, Boris? Am I the richest man in this country? <laughs> no, of course you're not, Chief. But you are rich. And if I may ask, Chief, what is wrong with giving? Nothing. But there's everything wrong with my daughter carrying my hard-earned money and giving to area boys and other miscreants who are not interested in any work, who are busy smoking Igbo and drinking a go, go in the streets every day. That's what's wrong. Begging. Why are you not walking? Uh, I am begging to train my son here in school. I have a big lump here. It's painful. It makes it very difficult for me to do any work. It's, I need an operation. But where is the money? I want my son here to grow up and be a big man so that he can take care of himself and me. If I'm alive by then, I am begging here. Yeah. Whatever I get, I save to pay his school fees and to buy his books. Yeah, but he's not in school now. He's here with you. He comes here to help me when the school is over. And at night he does his own work. Right. Okay. Let's see. Good luck, huh? Good luck to you, sir. And Godspeed. Do break your leg when you can. It will be good to see you again, sir. Where did they teach you that expression? Godspeed and break your leg. In school, sir. In your school? Yes, sir. He learns well. <laughs> All right, you see? Okay. From now on, until he's through with secondary school, his school fees will be my responsibility. <gasps> Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. I will stop by and give you the money every time. Hmm? Thank oh, you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's all right. Huh? Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're free to go home. I'm not willing to press any charges against you. I've spoken to your father, and um, he's going to drop the charges against you. 
Thank you. You do have a soul after all. Just needs to be stirred up. It is stirred up. And you stirred it up. See, did I tell you I gave money to a beggar today? He has a very brilliant son. And I've decided to take responsibility for his school fees. My instructions were clear. You were to detain her until she told us who she stole the car to. But no, you let her sweet talk you into releasing her. And why? She's my daughter. She's proven stubborn and requires a little bit of an iron hand to straighten her out. So now is my car going to be lost forever? My favorite car. Look, you must rearrest her and detain her. If you don't do that, I'll report you to your superiors. Chief, have they stopped manufacturing that car? The car is still there in the market. You can always afford another one. You can. I don't think that Bella should sleep in jail simply because she sold your favorite car to help some people in need. Come on, Chief. Police did not detain me. Have you brought a thug here to hand twist me to tell you to whom I sold the car? Where are you going? I'm going away, Dad. I'm leaving home. I'll go anywhere and leave my dream. Lending a hand to whosoever needs it within my God-given means. This man with me is a beggar. I picked him up from the street. Look. He's hungry. Let's feed him. He has no clothes. Let's give him something to wear. And then after that, we can figure out how to get in one of those block making machines you've been talking about. Dad, you changed. You're actually willing to help someone? You're my daughter. And you have the spirit of giving. So do I. It's just that mine was hidden deeper inside my heart. Your words have touched the spirit of giver in me and has brought it out to light. Oh God. It changed. Come. I love you, my daughter. I love you too, Dad. 